ಜನಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಯಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರಯತ್ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತೀತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿ ಸೋ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ರಿಸೈಟೆಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಂಗ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ and uh, before we begin reading um it's uh, it's it's always a practice that we um, invoke their blessings so that's why these prayers are recited so the first prayer om agyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakhaya chakshurun melitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha it actually means that i was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge i offer my respectful obeisances unto him so we are first offering respects to um, the spiritual master so that's the first prayer okay. and then yeah and shri chaitanya manobhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam roopa kadamahyam dadati swapadantikam so the second prayer is a prayer to um shri rupa goswami so whoever is in the um, disciplic succession uh in in our disciplic succession especially we are followers of shri rupa goswami so he is one of the great acharyas who came after shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and his specific contribution is that he knew exactly what was in the heart of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu mm-hmm. and he wrote them down according to how chaitanya mahaprabhu would have liked to see so we carefully read shrila rupa goswami's books so that's why we are offering our, uh, respects to rupa goswami also who knows the heart of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so, so that is the second prayer and uh, yeah after that we offer respects to uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu nityananda prabhu advaita prabhu gadadhar and shrivas so uh, these are um uh, prayers to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who is krishna himself and lord nityananda is chaitanya mahaprabhu's brother who is extremely merciful and advaita shrivas and gadadhar they also appeared with shri chaitanya mahaprabhu to assist in his past times so um, in our disciplic succession we always offer prayers to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu because he is krishna himself and he came uh, and undertook so many austerities to give us um, love for krishna so he is most magnanimous so therefore chaitanya. we always yes okay. Ch- chaitanya Ch- mahaprabhu Ch- chaitanya was was right right uh, 500 years ago right yes hmm. right okay. okay who was who was the uh, the the incarnation of krishna before prabhupada uh prabhupada is not an incarnation of krishna prabhupada is um uh, uh prabhupada is uh, he is a spiritual master oh uh, no i mean before well i guess no um what am i trying to say here um 
So who is uh, the incarnation of Krishna before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Yes. Okay. So um, Krishna has many, many incarnations. And mm-hmm. it is described in the scriptures that how many incarnations Krishna has, as many waves are as in the ocean. Uh, uh. And why does Krishna come in so many incarnations? Because um, he not only created the universes, but he also maintains them. Yeah. And the way to maintain them is uh, by coming in so many incarnations and from time to time, wherever there is decline of religious principles, he reestablishes them. Okay. okay. So um, there are many, 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 many incarnations of Krishna. Many incarnations. Hmm. So before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself came to this uh, planet. He came to Vrindavan and he exhibited his pastimes 5,000 years ago. Oh, right, right, right. So that was the last incarnation. Yes. Hmm. Okay. okay, I get you. Hmm. And and the last one, Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha, Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namonamaha. So this prayer, we are offering respects to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, who are just like desire trees and who can fulfill the desires of anyone. Mm. It's wonderful. Yeah. So um, usually... It is our day-to-day experience. We see Krishna in the deity form. We see Krishna as Srimad Bhagavatam. We see Krishna as the holy name. But our all our interactions are with the devotees. And it is by the mercy of the devotees that we learn about Krishna. We chant together with them. We hear together with them. So all our Krishna consciousness is um, a product of their um, um, assistance, their help and we also feel nourished by their friendships so uh, we also offer respects to all the Vaishnavas like who are with us today and who have been before us who have preserved this knowledge for us so we are offering respects to all, all the Vaishnavas Vaishnavas means who is a follower of Vishnu mm. okay. worshipper of Vishnu Hmm. And the last two verses that we recite are specifically recited before we study Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jai Mudhirat. So, these verses are actually found, I believe, in the first canto, kind of second chapter. Um, so, um, this is, we are offering respectful obeisances to Vyasadev who is the compiler of Srimad Bhagavatam, to Goddess Saraswati, who is the goddess of knowledge, um, and Naranarayan Rishi. Naranarayan Rishi are uh, incarnations of Krishna and his friend Arjun. Uh, they came as Naranarayan Rishi and they performed austerities for many, many, um, many years. So we offer respects to all of them. So that we can understand what is written in Srimad Bhagavatam. So we offer our respects to them. And then the last one is Nashta Prayeshu Abhatreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki. So this is actually a glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam. Anyone who regularly hears Srimad Bhagavatam. Whatever impurities are there within our heart are almost destroyed to nil. That means whatever is unwanted within our heart will not be able to act on us. Mm -hmm. So that is the glory of reading Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Nityam, Nityam means always. But Prabhupada also used to say if it is not possible to read Bhagavatam 24 hours a day, at least we should regularly recite Srimad Bhagavatam. So it will remove all the inauspiciousness from our heart. Recite? Did you say recite the Srimad Bhagavatam? 
<laughs> yeah, that means we should read and discuss. We yeah. try. It, we try. Well, with the, I mean, it's it's hard to remember to remember the you know all the prayers and it. How do you how do you do that? Oh, <laughs> if we just keep hearing, hearing for after many days, we will remember it. So we just have to hear somebody recite it. So we will remember like that. Yes. Yes, I so want to learn learn the Sanskrit. Sure. Uh, so Govardhan Leela, she said that she will uh, send you the verses, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she did. So once you have them, like um, you can recite them regularly, and like um, mm-hmm. then you will have it memorized. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, glories, oh, glories, oh, glories. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and the last, the meaning, the last uh, two lines, we mean, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, that means the Supreme Lord is always glorified um, in, in the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavati Uttama Shloka, Uttama Shloka means, um, who is glorified in beautiful verses. So that is the Supreme Lord. And in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is glorified. So his uh, another name of Krishna is Uttama Shlok. Hmm. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. That means firm um, bhakti. That means firm devotion to Krishna is established within one's heart by regularly studying Srimad Bhagavatam. So those are the verses we recite uh, before we uh, study Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. Mm. I I have a question. Um, what um, w- there's many um, uh, there there's no, I shouldn't say many. There's a lot of different different. Producers of the Srimad Bhagavatam, who, who, what, what, what entity do we do we order order them from that you read from? Oh, um, I, I mean, I, what pre, what press um, prints them? It's a uh, it's a Bhakti Vedanta book trust. The name of the press is called Bhakti. Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. And if you want to order, um, like just let us know. We can send it to you from Chicago. Uh, how much? How much is the eighteen volume? You know, I actually have to find out. But usually, I think when I purchased it. Uh, it was about um, three hundred, three twenty-five dollars when I purchased it, but this was like two years or three years ago. Oh wow! Mm. Because I called, I called Los Angeles, the uh-huh. the the book, the 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 printing, um, mm-hmm. the the bookstore in Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. um, I was inquiring about the about uh, membership mm-hmm. and. Oh, I see what I'm saying. Oh my gosh! Um, and they said that to become a member, and that once I became a member, which was like a thousand two hundred dollars, I think they quoted me, mm-hmm. um, that I would receive a, a complimentary, uh, uh, the comp, uh, you know, uh, I would receive uh, the volumes of the Bhagavatam with my membership fee. Mhm. Mhm. You know, I I just totally turned that around. I was like, oh my gosh. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that this uh, the Bhakti Tanvanta books were for a hundred dollars a piece. No, no, no. The entire set of eighteen volumes is three hundred something dollars. Oh my gosh. That would be great. I would, I would invest in them for sure if that's how they are. Mhm. Mhm. Hmm. Great. Great. 
लीला मंजरी माता जी यस माता जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा यू आर रीडिंग टुडे यस आई एम रीडिंग एंड व्हाट वर्ड्स इज टुडे माता जी वी आर रीडिंग um canto 2 chapter 9 text yeah. 38 and text 39 okay 38 and 39 okay thank you ma'am mm-hmm. who, who, who else is on the call uh if this i may know i don't know i'm just getting you both i am there okay hello yeah. hey, krishna ruchi mata ji hi this is this is one that dhanasi hi ma'am what what the uh, who Who was I just speaking to about about the about uh, the Bhakti Devanta um, volume? Mati ji, my my name is Leela Manjari Devi Dasi. Leela, can you spell that? You can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. L I L A. Leela. Okay, got that. Okay, got that. Yeah, got, that's yeah. enough. Oh, oh, and, okay. Oh, all right. And who is okay. Mati ji speaking? Mati ji. Oh, this is this is Linda in Tennessee. Oh, okay. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Rushali this side. Hare Krishna. This is Premarasa Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, Mataji. I did not catch the name of the devotee who spoke before Premarasa. Oh, Linda in Tennessee. Oh, Linda, I am speaking to Rishali. Yeah, but I I don't. Rishali. Rishali. Yeah, with the R. Okay. Yeah, okay. Rishali. Yeah. Okay. We have more devotees now in our group. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Since I went from uh, went to India, like we have so many more. So welcome. Yeah. I am also meeting with Rishali Mataji newly. So I don't know. <laughs> welcome, Mataji, to the group. thank you madhavi so let me start reading okay so uh, anyone who has a book in front of them does anybody have a book or a computer in front of them mm. uh, yes madhavi i do have mm. and who don't have a book there is a website called vedabase.com okay. you can open it up on your computer and this will scan to two Shrimad Bhagavatam, Chapter Nine, Text Thirty-Eight. Could could you say that one more time? Uh, v e d a Veda Base B A S E dot com. Okay. Okay. And then what? And then uh, there will be titles of books listed. So go to Shrimad Bhagavatam. Oh right, I know how to get on the site. I know how to get on the yeah. site. What chapter? Yeah. So, uh, Canto Two, Chapter Nine, Text Thirty Eight. Two, Canto Two, Text Chapter Nine, Text Thirty Eight. What What was the last one? What was the last one? Thirty Eight. Yeah. Okay. 38. Verse, verse. So we'll be reading 38 and 39, okay? Okay. Today. So Prabhu Madhuri Mata ji, would you like to read? Yes, Mata ji. Canto 2, chapter 9, text 38. Shri Shukha Uvacha Sampradiyeshwam Ajano Jananam Parameshtinam जय In this verse, it is clearly mentioned that the Lord is Ajanaha or the Supreme Person, and that He was showing His transcendental form, Atmano Rupam, to Brahma Ji while instructing him in the summarization of Shrimad Bhagavatam in four verses. He is Ajanaha or the Supreme Person amongst 
ஜனானாம் ஆர் ஆல் பர்சன்ஸ் ஆல் லிவிங் என்டிட்டிஸ் ஆர் இண்டிவிஜுவல் பர்சன்ஸ் அண்ட் அமாங்ஸ்ட் ஆல் சர்ச் பர்சன்ஸ் லார்ட் ஹரி இஸ் சுப்ரீம் ஆஸ் கன்ஃபார்ம்ட் இன் த ஸ்ருதி மந்திரா நித்யோ நித்யானாம் சேதனஸ் சேதனானாம் so there is no place for impersonal features in the transcendental world as there are in impersonal features in the material world whenever there is chetana sorry where yeah whenever there is chetana or knowledge the personal features come in in the spiritual world everything is full of knowledge and therefore everything in the transcendental world the land the water the tree the mountain the river the man the animal the bird everything is of the same quality namely chetana and therefore everything there is individual and personal shrimad bhagavatam gives us this information as the supreme vedic literature and it was personally instructed by the supreme personality of godhead to brahma ji so that the leader of the living entities might broadcast the message to all in the universe in order to teach the supreme knowledge of bhakti yoga brahma ji his turn instructed narada his beloved son the same message of shrimad bhagavatam and narada in his turn taught the same message to vyasadeva who again taught it to sukadev goswami through sukadev goswami's grace and by the mercy of maharaj parikshit we are all given shrimad bhagavatam perpetually to learn the science of the absolute personality of godhead lord shri krishna thank you mati ji um anyone else who has a book rishali do you have a book or computer in front of you would you like to read the next verse yes mati i can sure please okay. text 39 okay text 39 antare ஸ்லேஷன் ஆன் திஸ்அப்பியரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சுப்ரீம் பர்சனாலிட்டி ஆஃப் காட் ஹெட் ஹரி ஹூ இஸ் த ஆப்ஜெக்ட் ஆஃப் ட்ரான்சிடென்டல் என்ஜாய்மெண்ட் ஃபார் த சென்சஸ் ஆஃப் டிவோட்டீஸ் Brahma with folded hands began to recreate the universe full with living entities as it was first previously papat the supreme personality of godhead hari is the object for fulfilling the senses of all living entities illusion by the glaring reflection of the external energy the living entities worship the senses instead of engaging them properly in fulfilling the desires of the supreme in the hari bhakti uh, shuddhodaya 13.20 there is the following verse akshno palam tatvadhars dharsanam hi tadno palam ஃபுல்ஃபில்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் பாடிலி டச் the tongue is meant for glorifying your qualities because in this world a pure devotee of the lord is very difficult to find originally the senses of the living entity were awarded for this purpose namely to engage them in the transcendental loving service of the lord or of his devotees but the conditioned souls induced by the material energy become captivated by sense enjoyment therefore the whole process of god consciousness is meant to rectify the conditional conditional activities of the senses and to reengage them in the direct service of the lord lord brahma has engaged his senses in the lord by recreating the conditioned living entities to act in the recreated universe this material universe is thus created and annihilated by the will of the lord 
it is created by uh, it is created to give the conditioned soul a chance to act to return home back to godhead and servants like brahma ji narada ji vyasa ji and their company become busy with the same purpose of the lord to reclaim the conditioned souls from the field of sense gratification and return them to the normal stage of engaging the senses in service of the lord instead of doing so that is converting the actions of the senses the impersonalists began to make the conditioned souls senseless and the lord also senseless this is improper treatment for the conditioned souls the diseased condition of the senses may be treated by curing the defect but not fruiting the senses altogether when there is some dis- disease in the eyes the eyes may be cured to see properly plucking out the eyes is no treatment similarly the whole material disa- disease is based on the process of sense gratification and liberation from the diseased condition is re engagement of the senses to see the beauty of the lord here his glories and acts on his account thus brahma ji created the universe activities again completely okay, thank you thank you vrishali vrishali are the children playing behind you no 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 here uh, even i can hear the sound actually oh so somewhere there are children playing in the background i don't know where mm-hmm. okay so uh, uh so maybe like uh, at least like we can try to mute our phones maybe that will help hmm. and uh, can someone call janwa mathuri i forgot to call her uh and just merge the call okay so um okay so um we'll keep it simple uh since we read the uh, uh, purports and the translations uh, i'll summarize quickly and then we'll see if uh, there is more discussion okay so we'll leave more room for discussion so first thing here these verses are being spoken by sukadev goswami he is speaking to maharaj parikshit so so far the lord was speaking to brahma so now the lord has disappeared and he instructed brahma ji who is the who is the original living entity uh, who is going to create the entire universe but brahma is the first living entity so he is called as the leader of the living entities and then uh, what happened after the lord left is brahma started um, recreating the universe so this this happens that the universes are created and again um, uh, they are um, annihilated after a period of time and again after some time the universes are created again so this is a big topic in itself but brahma ji actually started recreating the universe so um in essence uh, i i felt uh, there are many points but one important point is that um the lord is distinct from other living entities so here in the purport of 38 there is a verse which says nitya nityanam chetana chetananam so that means there are many 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 living entities who are eternal but there is one supreme among all those eternal living entities so nityanam is plural and nitya nityo is singular so there is one singular living entity who is superior to all other living entities and chetana chetana naam chetana naam is plural that means there are many many living entities who are uh, who are cognizant of what is happening around them and but the lord is one living entity who is cognizant of everything so he is chetan chetana naam and we are all chetana naam i mean we exist in plural but he is one singular person who is above all these people 
So Prabhupada is making that distinction that um, uh, that the Lord is superior to all other living entities because there are many popular philosophies, especially nowadays, which do not make this distinction. They say that Lord is also another living entity. So um, Prabhupada wants to make that clear distinction and if we understand this point, uh, the same point will keep repeating through many, many, many purports. In fact, many, many, many cantos. In fact, in all of Srila Prabhupada's book, because this is such an important concept to understand that the Lord, although he is a living entity and he is eternal like all of us, still his position is very distinct. We cannot compare the living entities with the Lord. And what does he do? Um, he fulfills the desires of all other living entities. So he, here in purport of uh, text 39, it, say, it is said, the Supreme Personality of Lord Hari is the object for fulfilling the senses of all living entities. So that actually this verse, Nitya Nitya Nam Chetanas Chetana Nam, it ends with these words, Eko Bahunam Yo Vidhati Kaman, which means, there is only one living entity who is fulfilling all the desires of all other living entities. So his position is very unique. And uh, Prabhupada compares um, the transcendental world and the material world. And he says in the transcendental world, everything is cognizant. Everything has life. He says here, land, water, trees, mountains, rivers, animals, birds, everything. Um, has life in the spiritual world. And then he makes another point in the purport of 38 and he says that um, Srimad Bhagavatam is a literature that was personally instructed by the Supreme Lord to Brahma and as disciplic succession progresses, Brahma taught it to Narada, Narada taught it to Vyas, Vyas taught it to his son Sukadev Goswami and Sukadev Goswami spoke to Parikshit Maharaj. So this is how knowledge about the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transferred. So this is another important point that in material world, we try to acquire knowledge by using our senses. We make an experiment, as Prabhupada used to say, and then we see what is observation and we draw conclusions. But in this, in understanding spiritual knowledge, the process is slightly different. Krishna, who is the origin of both the spiritual and material worlds, he speaks the knowledge to his... Actually, Brahma becomes his son because he's the first living entity. So he, in that sense, he's the son of the Supreme Lord. And we are all his son, sons, uh, our children, sons and daughters, and even the um, plants and beasts. They're all sons of God, like children of God. And But the, um, how knowledge is transferred is from the Supreme Lord, he passes it to his representative, and from his representative, they teach it to his, their disciples, and their disciples then teach to the next generation of disciples. That's how spiritual knowledge is disseminated. So these are the points in the purport of 38. Uh, that I felt was um, like of value to us, you know. And um, I mean, there are many, many more, but I thought these are the important ones. And then text 39 actually talks about devotional service. So in this material creation, what is the purpose? Many people ask this question. Like, why am I suffering? We have done good deeds. We are good people, but still, why are we still suffering? And what is the purpose of creation? Did God create this universe and did he disappear? Does God even exist? Um, at least I have heard these questions. I don't know if you have encountered these questions when either we have asked it ourselves or somebody else has asked us uh, over a course of time. Because sometimes we are faced with challenging situations, difficult situations in life, and, and we wonder, like, why all this? What is the purpose of all this? And the purpose is being clearly explained in text 39. 
we as materially conditioned living entities we think that by enjoying our senses uh we become happy and that's why we keep we keep wanting to enjoy our senses but um sometimes it doesn't and not everything works according to our plan so then we have to understand what is the bigger plan of the lord and the bigger plan of the lord is explained here actually we have our senses to engage the senses in the service of the lord that's the way to experience transcendental happiness in the material world also there is happiness when the senses that we have um, contact the sense objects that means we eat something that is that we like or we touch something that is nice or um, uh, we hear something that's pleasing so that is actually the enjoyment of the senses but when we use the same senses for um, performing devotional service to perform some service for the lord then we gain transcendental happiness when the lord is pleased automatically the living entity also feels pleasure and that is the difference between material happiness and transcendental happiness so here in the purport proper is explaining illusion by the glaring reflection of the external energy the living entity worship the senses instead of engaging them properly in fulfilling the desires of the lord so this this is the main um difference between spiritual consciousness and material consciousness in spiritual consciousness we are always trying to fulfill the desires of the lord and in material consciousness we are always trying to fulfill our own desires so that is the difference and um, so proper is in the next verse he's telling us how how do we fulfill the desires of the lord um actually it is said that the devotees of the lord are so rare so if we touch the body of a devotee that is the perfection of touching and if we are able to see a devotee of the lord that is the perfection of seeing and the tongue is meant for glorifying the qualities um and and here actually either the lord or the devotee like um, but here they are specifically speaking about the pure devotee of the lord he is very difficult to find so anything we do to satisfy the lord or his pure devotee is devotional service and that is the only purpose of this material world that we have come here uh, because our consciousness has now become polluted we do not know who we are who the lord is what is the purpose of our existence and um, we are struggling uh, to some extent or other each, each individual has a different struggle um, but from a transcendental perspective actually we are struggling um so in order to come out of that diseased condition um mm, these literatures have been given for us to read and um rectify our condition state and there is uh, one last point um uh, that is very very important because prabhupad writes about it again and again and again and again and again as i had previously explained that there is a popular philosophy that there is no distinction between the living entity and the lord that's one type of philosophy and there is another extension to this same philosophy they say in the ultimate sense everything is one everything is energy everything is light even recently when i visited in the india and i went to a person and i was speaking to him and then he said oh you are a devotee of krishna don't you even know in the ultimate sense everything is one we are all energy and then uh, i didn't say anything because i didn't feel it was appropriate but prabhupad uh, clearly warns us against this type of philosophy because according to the vaishnav philosophy we are we have personality today uh for example premarasa is a different person prabila madri mataji is a different person linda is a different person and um uh, what was your name mataji rish uh 
I'm sorry, I, I, um, Vrishali, Vrishali, yeah. So she, mm-hmm. she is a different person and we all have different personalities. So even after this lifetime, we will continue to have personalities. Even if all of us, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna, all of us, if we meet in the spiritual world, we will still have personalities. It's not that we become one, we become energy and we merge into Krishna. Krishna is energy. This philosophy is never, never, never supported in, um, according to Vaishnav understanding. So a- any questions? Or anything you would like to ask based on what we discussed? Um, Mataji, um, as you said that um, we are um, we are different personalities. Um, I have also heard, I'm not clear about things, but I have also heard that there is one more stage that is below uh, below the what we are. Um, actually, we, uh, we as a Vaishnav, if we are following Vaishnav, a philosophy then it says that um later on uh everyone is going to reside and go to uh krishna's abode and uh, um actually what i even i what i heard about um there is one more stage like um getting into the brahma jyoti and all those stuff is that something the soul gets merged into the brahma jyoti okay this is a nice question because i didn't touch on that aspect so, um, yes, actually, Brahma Jyoti is nothing but, uh, in the spiritual world, everything um, is uh, effulgent. Effulgent means there is light emanating from the bodies. In the spiritual world, there is no need of artificial lighting. Uh, there is no need of the sun. There is no need of the moon. Krishna describes this in Bhagavad Gita. And um, also from Krishna's body, there is a light that emanates and that is called Brahma Jyoti. So when most people are speaking about ultimately it's energy, it's light, I don't even know if they understand this concept properly, but it is true that there is a divine light that emanates from Krishna's body and everybody who resides uh, with Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan, in the Vaikuntha planets. So... um, the light that emanates from Krishna's body is called Brahma Jyoti. And actually there is a kind of liberation in which the soul um, wants to merge in Brahma Jyoti. So, uh, but uh, in that state, Prabhupada uh, explains it in other purports. He says that that state cannot be a permanent state. Why? Because as a, the soul is always active. And it is always seeking engagement. It wants to do something. It wants to experience something. So to remain suspended in that light um, without any activity um, is hard. It is hard for the soul to be in that state. So again, they fall back into the material world. Is it helpful? Rishali, do you have any any further clarification you want? Uh, yes, Mataji, I'm good. Hmm. Okay, uh, I have a question. Can I ask? Yes, Ruchi Mataji. So, like you said that, uh, you know, like we are not energy and we are just individual beings. Well, uh, that is true in a sense. But also then, uh, like how would you explain that how we become sometimes plants, animals, and uh, living beings according to our human beings according to our karma in different incarnate uh, in different like uh, when we are incarnating uh, reincarnating. So we um, we according to the karma we or according to whatever then we are like born even like in the examples of Mangri and Nalkuver who were who who got turned into plants and there are many other times like the uh, the elephant and everything. So, uh, I mean, it, it is not... So how does that happen? Is that no, your question? Isn't, isn't it like like we are, we are being transformed as like, 
like energy is a very um broad term like we uh, we are of course we are going to be present uh like the soul will be there but like uh it is also like uh, an energy of like all our karmas that is passing from one generation from one incarnation to the other so like isn't that true um, like the energy energy so of our karmas so the energy of our karmas is uh, is uh, not generally used it's not generally described like that our karma definitely exists so um, and uh, based on what we have done in this lifetime and previous lifetime and according to our desire desire is also another important factor in deciding what will be our next destination so the soul is eternal does everybody agree the soul is eternal yes um so uh, at least theoretically we will accept okay the soul is eternal because it is a part and parcel of krishna just as krishna is eternal the soul is also eternal it is described the nature of the soul is described in the second chapter of bhagavad gita if anybody wants to go back and refer to it and um, the soul uh, it uh, in its original pure state it does not have a material body it has a spiritual body but in this condition world when we come to this material world like how brahma ji is creating all the living entities that means he is not creating the souls because the souls already exist he is creating the bodies of the living entities so um and there are different bodies based on what we desire so in again in bhagavad gita it is described that if someone wants to uh, eat meat then because it is his desire to eat meat he will be given a suitable body to fulfill that desire so a suitable body would be that of a lion or a tiger or a carnivorous animal which can eat meat in the next life if somebody likes to sleep a lot then they will be born as a bear because a bear likes to sleep a lot and if um, you know so there are so many different desires and accordingly the soul never changes but the body changes and even within our own experience we can see but our bodies are changing for example if somebody wants to become a expert swimmer okay so he will go at least like if um he's not uh, if he's acting on it then he will go to the gym he'll exercise then he will go inside and you know take laps in the swimming pool and he'll practice and train so after a few days or a few months we will see that his body has transformed he has more muscles he has become more skinnier and um, so similarly like based on our desire our body changes so at the time of death also whatever consciousness we carry at the time of death becomes um the um, uh, it it breathes our next destination So is it helpful Ruchi Mata ji? Um so now, now you're happens? talking about karma right like what will happen to karma So karma is not the energy karma is an account of what we have done the past deeds and past uh, good deeds and misdeeds So those accounts are taken care of by higher living entities chitragupta the 10 directions paramatma so there are it is said that whatever we perform they are witnessed by 12 or 13 witnesses we have 13 witnesses to whatever we do so accordingly we have to suffer or we have to enjoy depending on what we have performed that is karma Okay, 
Ruchi Mataji, if you have any further question, you can ask me. If you are satisfied, then it's fine. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that is what I was trying to say. Um, maybe I can't explain it so well. But what I was trying to say is that, um, like, we have no memories. We have no, uh, we have no, um, this thing of our previous lives. So what we carry, or even of this life. So what the soul, like, um, like, uh, like, even from birth, so like, supposing what, what we have gone through, what, what experiences we've had, or whatever has uh, happened, good or bad, we don't even remember that, or the karma we have done. Um, so, and of course, yes, the soul, the soul is there, but um, when we go to the next life, what really goes forward? What really goes forward is that because we don't remember mm -hmm. anything in it in yes, its yes. eternal form. In its eternal form, the soul is not contaminated by actions, thoughts, or or you know anything. So um, so what is actually getting passed on from this life? Uh -huh. to the nice, life nice is, question. Is, Very nice question, Ruchi Mataji. It, it is yeah. it is like partly energy that is being transferred from one reincarnation to the other one is partly energy that is being transferred from one one um one uh, one incarnation to the other because the soul is not it is untouched by anything yes the soul is untouched by anything yes perfect so the body is composed of five elements earth water fire air and ether it is born and then at the time of death it dies. It dies in the sense that again it um, goes back. The elements uh, disintegrate. Whatever was composing the body. So you're right. So what goes on from in a conditioned state is the subtle body. The subtle body carries the soul to its next destination. That is also explained in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 8. So the subtle what? body consists of the mind, intelligence and false ego. So the subtle body is the one that carries the desires of the soul and it carries the soul to its next body. So that we can say as a form of energy can't be like that, that is being that I mean, more specifically, it is this. Yeah. Okay. If you want to call it as energy, you can call it as energy, but it's actually um, these subtle elements, mind, intelligence, and false ego. When Everything is the energy of the Lord. Earth, water, air. You, these are all energies of the Lord. But but if the mind, intelligence, and ego are being carried forward, and like supposing um supposing the the body assumes the form of the plant, where is the mind? Where is the ego? Where is the where is the um what was the third thing? Intelligence. Mind, intelligence, and false ego. Yeah, so where does the intelligence and false ego, like the false ego also, uh, that is not, the false ego is also into turn into plant. So what kind of an ego it is? And then what about the intelligence and the mind? If, if like a, a human being like who's transformed into the body of a plant, then what? Okay, hey, yes, Mataji. So your question is, Again, a nice question. The thing is, depending on how much we are covered, our consciousness can be very clear uh, to spiritual knowledge. And that is a human form of life, where the consciousness is very clear and exhibited fully. But lower than that, when the consciousness is more covered, is the animal form of life the birds, reptiles, and the four-legged animals, where they can um, perform eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, but they cannot connect with God directly. So intelligence is highest in human form of life. Then lower than that will be the animal form of life. And lowest is the plant form of life. So the consciousness 
uh, exhibition of consciousness because it is completely dulled in um, plant form of life, you can say, oh, they have no false ego, but actually false ego exists in a subtle way. It, intelligence is completely covered over it. But it still exists with the soul. The proof that there is a material body, whether it is in a plant form, cockroach form, lizard form, dog form, cat form, human form, demigod form. If a material body exists, we can know for guaranteed that we have had some karma and therefore, and our consciousness is contaminated, therefore we have been given a body. And as long as we have a body, we also have a subtle body of mind, intelligence, and false ego. So you mean that subtle body gets transformed into the subtle body of a plant because then the subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego, false ego, they are completely transformed into the mind, intelligence, and false ego of a plant. That's why the subtle body... Imagine your mind, intelligence, and false ego, and my mind, intelligence, and false ego are not transformed. The body is, we get a new body. It still remains the same. So the subtle body, what happens to the subtle body? That's what I'm saying. It remains with the soul. It, it, the, the, soul the soul is untouched by anything. The subtle body, is, like of a plant, uh, is uh, is totally different from the subtle body of a, of a, um, of a human being. The subtle body of a human being, the mind, intelligence, and the false ego are completely because when when one is in the form of a plant, it will identify itself as a plant. It will function. The mind will function so that it can survive as a plant, and the intelligence will be so that it can survive. The mind, intelligence, and false ego will be all that of a plant. So then, how can it be the same? So that means it is just uh, the uh, a, a energy which is being transferred because how to for that is something i always want to okay Marjorie, you. very very nice mechanical like technical question but mother nature has her way of doing things we uh, i mean technically how it happens it's up to mother nature how she does it but you gave the example of, and we will stop with this because uh, like you know there are other people on the class if they want to say something Manigriva and Nalukuvera, you gave the example of Manigriva and Nalukuvera and they became trees in their next life, right? Mm -hmm. So they, were, they had a human body, but they were not using their human body for um, uh, God consciousness to elevate themselves spiritually. What were they doing? They were roaming around naked with women and completely intoxicated. So now you can say, oh, he is in human consciousness. Human consciousness means, Prabhupada says one cannot be considered a human being unless he is inquiring about higher spiritual matters. So although they have a body of a human being, their consciousness was not in tune with the human body and the responsibilities of the human body. And Mother Nature, she whatever she has given, she can take away. They were given a human body, but they could not utilize it. So she took it away. She gave them a plant body. Okay, if you want to be naked, plants are naked, so you can be naked as plants. Why do you need a human body if you don't use it? So that's how like karma works. That's how Mother Nature works. Whatever we need, she keeps giving. And the same person, after their consciousness was rectified by, uh, and purified uh, in, in the form of a tree, they again got back their human bodies. 
बिकॉज नाउ देर कॉन्शियसनेस इज एलिवेटेड ऑल दो दे वर इन ट्रीज दे वर ट्रीज इन द कोर्ट यार्ड ऑफ नंद महाराज वेर कृष्ण वॉज प्लेइंग सो नाउ देर कॉन्शियसनेस इज मच हायर ऑल दो दे आर इन बॉडीज ऑफ अ ट्री सो इट ऑल डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ वी यूज वॉट मदर नेचर हैज गिवन अस even in our experience we see right like if we don't use something we lose it for example when i was a child i used to be able to speak bengali because we were brought up in calcutta now i have not spoken the language in 20 some years now i can understand but i cannot speak so mother nature gave that ability and she took it away what do we we don't use she takes it away So in one sense, Ruchi Mataji, I did not exactly go through the technical details, but I explained how I understood your question. That's okay. Please go on. Any anybody else would like to say something? Add something? Nothing from my side, Dr. Madhuri Mataji. Thank you. The wonderful class, and it is nice to hear you after a long, long time. <laughs> Thank you all for listening and um, for being patient. <laughs> Thank okay, you, Lanya. I was also thinking that. yeah we have heard you after a long time so it is nice to hear yeah i like the explanation of the verse that chetana chetana naam that verse yeah i mean that's a very frequently quoted verse but mm. um yeah i didn't know the meaning so clearly so it was nice yeah thank you okay thank you so ruchi mathu ji if you want more um, explanation maybe like we can write to um, chandramali maharaj or someone it's okay, fine i don't want to trouble him it's fine uh, yes i was uh, thinking that uh, it it we can call it by different names but eventually it will that you know basically i Karmas and everything they just get passed on. Doesn't matter how. I guess that's the whole point. Hmm. Okay. Um. So should we end here? Yes, Mata Ji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri La Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Mata Bhagavati ki jai. Jai. Thank you Mataji Hare Krishna